The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Tiger Technician Hour with your host, Basil Chapman. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-445-1044. Now, Basil Chapman. Hi, everyone. Basil Chapman, Tiger Technicians Hour. And it's my pleasure to be here noon till 1 p.m. Eastern Time, 877-927-6648. Love to hear from you. And I'm looking here at a Dow that's down 18 at uh, 22,340. The S&P is down just 0.66 at 2499 comp index is down five at 6417 and that's with apple pulling back and the vix is at 9.87 up 20 cents <clears throat> in the 120 minute chart that you can see of the e-mini <clears throat> there was an arch formation started back in uh that was september around about the no it's probably august of 27 let me just get that exact date I'll open this up. There you are. So you're looking at this chart. Yeah, this is the 120-minute chart. And you go back to the 15th, uh, where the low was 24.87. It climbs to peak A, B, C, D, E, goes sideways in a rectangle formation, squeaks to a new A, B, C inside a Chapman Wake buy mode to a D at 2507.25, just above the 2506 round number high that was made at that peak E. Uh, back on the uh, 17th, and look what happens. Suddenly you get this arch formation, pulls back sharply with the MACD, which was showing a divergence. That's why <clears throat> I get asked about this technical Friday. I'm going to talk about the technicals in a moment. You see the way the MACD <clears throat> pulled back? See the way the MACD pulled back uh, before from the 13th, if you're looking at my charts, this particular chart that I'm showing? Well, look at the way <clears throat> it went from 2495.50, the high of the... Um, at 8 o'clock on the 12th of September, pulls back in a rectangle formation, squeaks to 24.96.25, uh, 75 cents higher. And then, if you can hear buzzing in the background, I'm sorry about that, pulls back to 24.87 in one sharp move and then carries on as if nothing had happened to higher highs. And it does that 2,506 round number high on the 120-minute chart E-mini. Uh, that was on the 18th. <clears throat> goes chop, chop, chop sideways, has a chap wave inside bar to ABC, gray ABC, and then pop, uh, a blue D, that means a new all-time high in this case, goes to 2507 and then pulls back. Had a left side, right side price time match, but then took one extra bar just to sneak down to the chap wave inside, um, it's called the chap wave inside wedge, target support line, comes down, actually touches that and then bounces nicely goes to 24.92 round number low this morning look at the magd starting to turn up histogram is still negative it's minus 0.04 but it was way negative before and now look at the stochastic making slightly higher highs uh no much higher highs slightly lower lows oh man slightly higher highs and slightly higher lows that's what i wanted to say and still acting quite well but nothing's going to happen until that S&P breaks above, this is the E-mini, December, into the 2,500 area. It's another two and, two and a quarter points from here. That's going to be a very tall order. However, <clears throat> I need to speak about this. I, I, I repeat it over and over over the years. I'll do it again. In my experience, and this is just my experience, <clears throat> Until you get negative, the market, what the market perceives as negative news, and it gets repeated, it becomes a mantra, and the market declines sharply, pretty much double digit, strong double digit down to triple digit down in the daily Dow, um, especially in the futures, and double digit down from minus 12 to minus 15 in the S&P futures, <clears throat> excuse me, every day. And it needs to do that early in the morning, overnight into the early morning and then try to rally during the day all rallies should fail and go to a lower low then we're in a bear phase and at this particular point if you're looking at the 120 minute chart that was a bear phase right there the 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 the, the um uh magd was sh pulling back sharply but look at the price <clears throat> it accelerated down but 
What's really important is the snapback. And at any point, if you take out the expansion bar, either on the upside or the downside, in this case, it's on the upside, and you close above it, even just one bar above 2,500, that'll signify that there's more internal strength than weakness. That's what I wanted to say there. Get out of that, and I want to show you a whole bunch of things. So let's just finish all the numbers. Got a, a lot of questions as well. Let me see if I can move this over to there. Move that over to there. And we're on our way. Now, the weekly chart of the Dow is forming a doji candle. This is going to be really important. See the little doji candle that was formed right there on the ninth, the week of the 9th of June? Oh, nothing happened. Next week, another little tiny doji, narrowest trading range you've seen in years on the weekly chart, the sixth, the week of the 16th of June, and then pops to another little high with a tiny little doji close uh, on the 23rd of June. A doji is like a plus sign, it's a little leg up, a little leg down, and where you start, you begin, so it's like a, like a plus sign. And then there's a pullback, holds the nine period moving average, <clears throat> spikes higher to a D, pulls back sharply. That's where I thought that was going to be a, a little bit more serious of a, a pullback. No, snaps back to the nine period moving average, which is at 2466. We're at 2497 right now. This is outstanding action. But I've got to watch carefully because the MACD could very well deflect lower and the stochastics at 80 percent, but it isn't quite as strong as it was earlier on. So there's a divergence there. So I'm not being sanguine here. Uh, and it's interesting. Yesterday, uh, so, uh, one or two people thought that I sounded quite bullish, and others uh, said, gee, you, you, this is the first time you're beginning to become more negative. I tell you exactly where I am. I, I don't know if it's going to be, but you see the E-mini at 2507, 25 daily. That is a peak C. There's a chance that if I want to use Chapman Wave um, methodology, I could make this into a phantom peak right there because it was parallel highs and I could make this a brand new D. I really don't want to do that and I'll tell you why. <clears throat> you see the way the MACD is turning down but it is still mighty, it is so strong. Look, the histograms are 2.19, that's really strong. <clears throat> Stochastic, even with all the selling yesterday and this morning, is at 94%, that's really good. On balance volume has only made a peak B. And I think that it could go to another high. So I'm, I'm just saying that on a very short term, I want to be as strict as I can. I'm going to jump. A, no, let me finish all the numbers. So make it real simple. The close below 2489 on the E-mini, I have to say, you know what? Maybe I have to use the phantom peak. I don't really want to. And that, now here's the other thing. This little doji candle that's for me right now. If there is a decisive close below the uh, low of this this week, 2492, that'll be a big negative. If in in fact, we're looking at uh, a chance of closing above it. I, 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 that's going to be tough. But if you can close above 2507, 25, that's another positive, and that represents the candles we saw back in June. Now, let's continue. I'm going to go to uh, the QQQ series. I just want to show something. Pulling back, trying to find support in the 144 area. Weekly candles, no good but it's still way above the nine period moving average. Because this is such an important period, at least for me, and I think for my subscribers, and I think for some of you who have asked so many questions, I'm going to be a little bit more comprehensive in my, my Chapman Wave methodology, technical Friday outlook and look into the market. So I might not take questions, although they're already lining up the questions. I'll try my best to get to them, but I want to get to this. I'll be if right back. If you're looking to open your portfolio to World of Opportunity, consider the new market-safe emerging currency CD from EverBank. This three-year U.S. dollar-denominated CD gives you exposure to five equally weighted currencies from Brazil, China, India, Indonesia, and Turkey at a time when experts see great potential for global growth. Even better, it features a 7.0 leverage factor, which means you could earn a potential market upside payment of seven times the CD's performance at maturity with no cap if the currencies increase in value over the CD's term. And should the opposite occur, your principal is 100% protected. Keep in mind, returns are based on CD performance. There is no annual percentage yield or periodic rate of interest on this index CD. Don't miss out. The September 28th funding deadline will be here before you know it. So call 1-855-750-4051 or visit everbank.com slash TFNN for the CD's term sheet and other important product details and disclosures. This advertisement is sponsored content. Everbank is a division of TIAA, FSB, member FDIC.
Since 1984, Basil Chapman has been using the Chapman Wave methodology to advise traders of his expert market opinion. While originally hand-drawing charts from the late 1970s into the 1980s, Basil noticed that prices under most circumstances virtually always had a certain number of legs to the upside before declining sharply. Later, Basil found that computer software, which included the standard market technical indicators, enhanced the degree of accuracy in calling price turns, as well as market trend calls. Thus was born the Chapman Wave sequence. Using the Chapman Wave methodology along with other indicators, Basil Chapman advises his subscribers of his expert market opinion each market day with his opening call newsletter. Right now, you can get a two-week free trial to the opening call, Basil's daily trading newsletter, by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Cancel at any time during that trial and pay absolutely nothing. Get your two-week free trial to Basil's newsletter, The Opening Call, today by visiting TFNN.com. The Path of Least Resistance is David White's daily trading newsletter, and if you're looking for active trading ideas, then now's a perfect time for a 30-day free trial to this powerful daily trading advisory service. David uses his years of trading experience to offer his subscribers his trading ideas each morning in his Path of Least Resistance newsletter. Using a combination of equity trades along with options, David keeps his subscribers up to date with all pertinent market information with intraday afternoon updates when warranted. Don't miss out on this great chance to get a 30-day free trial to David's daily newsletter, The Path of Least Resistance, with no obligation to pay anything. David has been delivering solid recommendations for his subscribers recently, and if you'd like to see the type of newsletter he delivers every morning, then visit the front page of TFNN, and you'll find The Path of Least Resistance under Trading Newsletters. For all the details, and to start your 30-day free trial today, log on to TFNN. Dot com now. Basil takes your phone calls now. now. Toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-445-1044. Hi, folks. So this is Technical Friday. So I, wanted, I, I need to be a little bit more technical. So it's minus 24 on the Dow, minus 1.25. Uh, a much better, uh, a smaller gain on the uh, S&P at this particular moment. I, I'm not sanguine. I'm just saying that I'm still seeing strength, and I, I wouldn't be surprised if the market actually holds a little better, a little longer. And believe me, um, I am, I'm, I, I've got a list of, of shorts that we want to implement and uh, why I want to implement them. But in the meantime, I, just, I had a question about, and this is Technical Friday, so let me do this. I had a technical question about the 120-minute E-mini. Well, isn't this a B? That's your A, this candle right here, the candle of... Uh, four o'clock yesterday, we slumped down and then bounced back uh, in the last hour and a half, um, and it went down to 24.94. So that low, 24.94, is A, and you could call this B at 24.92. But no, in the Chapman wave, every trough, every peak has to be labeled. That's your only obligation. And if you label it, you go back and you say that was an A minus because there was your A, there was your B at 20, 2501.50. Yep, and here's your C at 2496.50, and there's your D at 2492. So now everything is intact, but there's a, a flattish stochastic, did make a V-shaped pattern. Now it's going sideways. I don't like sideways. I'm on Friday this time. It looks to me like you got to be a little careful here. I don't want to see. In other words, now we've got two fighting patterns. One is the arch formation to go all the way back to the 20 at 2496 right now to go back to the 2492 um, area, a retest and an arch formation. Here's the other one. The other one is to say, you know what? You could come back even just a little bit, but then there's a chance, just a chance. As I said, I don't want to be saying when I would be looking at the facts, and the facts for me are that the daily chart is still showing internal strength. The weekly chart is showing a lot of strength, and the 120-minute chart had its decline, it's had the stochastic pull back to uh, under 20%. Now it's rallying to 37%, and the MACD has been forming a nice turnaround. It hasn't turned yet. I'm just saying that the moment, if it's able to, if it can hold for one 10-minute bar into the second 10-minute bar, above 24.99.25, I'd love to say 2,500 today, That'll say, you know what, the buyers are just waiting. Too many people have missed the big rallies. There are so many people talking bearish. I, and that's all I can say is that I, 
I'm trying to be bearish, but I look at the charts and I say, wow, we've, we had nine long stocks yesterday. We one got taken out for a profit and all eight are, are rallying. In fact, a couple are, are leading the market higher. Um, I don't know what to say. And um, I just have to. We'll see. All I can say is that I'm trying trying to do my best. Now, let me explain what, what really is going on for me. You see this Dow 120 minute chart made a peak G slash C at 20, 22,419 yesterday. Theoretically, that concluded a five, Chapman Wave five, and we should be pulling back. But the 20 period exponential moving average, which hasn't been touched since that gap up on the uh, 1130 on the 11th of September, not only was the nine period moving average broken yesterday, but the, the 20 period moving average is being touched. And that says to me, OK, now you've got to be a little bit careful because, look, the 120 minute chart, the MACD is flattening out, but it's still very wide. It's, it's negative. The stochastic is not yet settled. It's at 40. It's trying to turn. It's still a big, a wide difference between the nine period differential and the, um, and the slow moving average. So that says to me, uh, don't be sanguine. Don't just. You know, you've got to be very disciplined here. And what I did for subscribers, because we are long the Dow, I wanted to try to stay long as much as possible. I said, if such and such happens, let's add a um, a small position in the two times short. And that means I'm able to say, you know what, I might want to keep that just a day or two longer. And if the stops on the on the long side aren't hit, we might be able to take profits and see a turnaround to the upside to try to get that D. If I'm correct, that there should still be a D in the Chapman Way um, daily chart of the Dow. So here we are. This is the discrepancy I have. You see, everything here fits nicely. Look, there's just a little bit of a pullback. Big deal. The peak C being made today, I'm way above the daily nine period moving average. Um, there's the chart with the MACD still strong, stochastic holding beautifully. The unbalanced volume has pulled back a little bit. Um, you've got 22,266 22, 22, as key nine period exponential moving average support. Hasn't even got close. The day's young. Who knows by the end of the day? I don't know. I'm, the, these are not the characteristics of a high VIX, bad news, double digit down, strong double digit down in the Dow. Uh, strong double digit down in the S&P. We're just not seeing it right now. We're seeing buying coming in, even with Apple, one of the leaders um, in the NASDAQ area, pulling back. And now this is the real issue. I've got a, a discrepancy between peak C in the Dow. I, there's no, I can't, I can't falsify it. I can say, yeah, that peak D, you never broke below the starting point. So this could be an E slash C. You know, that's, I don't want to be elaborate. I've got a very simple technique. <clears throat> so I am expecting it to, oh man, but what happens? All of a sudden the diamonds make a peak D. That is a peak D no matter how I count it. And uh, I, I have to think about that. I prefer to go with the root, which is the Dow. The, the diamonds are just a mere extrapolation of information from the, the root, the Dow. And look at this. The spy had that um, had that dividend a week ago. The reason why it was down <clears throat> when the S and P was up, I couldn't understand. I said there must have been a dividend, but I couldn't find it. I tried to check and I didn't see that, and then I forgot about it. And then someone said, "Yep, there was a dividend." That means if you were short, I, I might be wrong. I haven't been in this situation before, but if you're short and there's a dividend payout. You actually have to pay that dividend, I think, whatever it is. There is a chance that to call this a peak C1, C2, but it's a peak C. However, look what happened. The Dow, uh, so the S&P made a D. So I've got three, <clears throat> if I exclude the SPY because of the dividend, I have three out of four that actually could have been at a D. I still am looking at strength. Look at the strength of this fast moving average of the, of the, of the MACD. The nine period differential. So that, I didn't mean that when I said stochastic before, I was talking about fast and slow moving averages. So this is, and the stochastic said 93%. I'm seeing strength. And I had that. So what we're doing is we're staying long. I'm getting, I'll be prayer over the weekend. Some shorts that are, 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 are in their own world. And now what I want you to do is to show you look at the, the QQQ. The QQQ has pulled back. It's taken all this time, but it's basically in a rectangle formation. And until the Qs decisively break 143 support, which I think they're going to do, 
but they haven't done it yet. I have to say that that allows at least a little leeway to rally from 144.15 to the nine period moving average of 145.09. I don't think it's the, the spy will make the cues will make a new high. I'm just waiting for certain things to unfold. I might have to do this all sooner. So at the short position, I am looking at, I mean, we looked at Caterpillar yesterday, one of the leaders on the upside. I said, wow, it's really close to some kind of a pullback. This is now going to a leg E uh, with a MACD, very strong stochastic at 95% and the on balance volume very strong. So it seems to me <clears throat> that today would have been the perfect day to be down 150 in the Dow and 25, 22 to 25 points in the S&P. Everybody said, yeah, well, it, it, it was time. And yet the market is holding well. That is a, that is a good sign. It's a sign of internal strength. Until now. <clears throat> I'll be right back. Basil Chapman, Tiger Technicians. Platinum, grains, crude oil, gold, copper, cattle, hogs, gasoline, natural gas, coffee, cotton, cocoa, and sugar. These are just some of the commodities mentioned in the most recent issue of Andy Hecht's Techno Mental Commodity Report. Andy publishes his weekly newsletter every Thursday morning where he breaks down the commodity market and provides his subscribers with specific trading recommendations based on his trading methodology. By signing up for a free trial to the Technomental Commodity Report, you'll get a full 30 days to try out this powerful newsletter service and see for yourself the types of trades Andy has recommended for his subscribers. When you sign up for a 30-day free trial, you're under no obligation to pay anything. And should you decide to continue, you will lock in the low rate of only $79 dollars a month sign up right now for the techno mental commodity report and make sure you're ready to catch the next big trade in commodities for more information and to get started today visit the front page of tfnn.com Many of our new listeners have heard about The Tiger's Den, but wondered, what exactly is it? The Tiger's Den is a lively community where professional traders and investors can meet, exchange ideas and information, and a comfortable, moderated atmosphere. Hear all of your favorite TFNN shows, plus see all the charts as they happen, live, during those shows, and have access to all those charts. You can test drive The Tiger's Den absolutely free for 30 days. It will greatly enrich your knowledge of these markets. Details on The Tiger's Den are on the front page of TFNN.com. The Taz Profile Scanner Plus, developed by John Logan and his team, is a standalone piece of software that can change the way you trade. Let the Taz Profile Scanner work for you by scanning over 5,000 financial instruments such as stocks, ETFs, commodities, futures, and Forex. Right now, you can get a 30-day free trial to the Taz Profile Scanner Plus right at TFNN.com. And when you sign up, you gain instant access to John Logan its most recent webinar, How Price, Volume, and Time Make Market Profiles So Unique. This hour-long webinar with John Logan will walk you through the most powerful features of the scanner and how you can use it to become a more successful and profitable trader. You pay absolutely nothing for 30 days while you try out this software risk-free. For more information on the Taz Profile Scanner and to get your 30-day free trial today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. Tiger TV is an exciting way to experience TFNN programming, see high-definition video, giving you crystal-clear charts, as well as seeing some of the faces of TFNN's highly acclaimed financial experts with crisp, full-fidelity sound. Catch Tom O'Brien, John Logan, Steve Rhodes, Basil Chapman, Larry Pesavento, Think or Swim, David White, Andy Hecht, and Daryl Martin in crystal-clear, high-definition audio and video. Tiger TV, exclusively at TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. So let's continue. Dow's down 24, S&P is just down one and a quarter. We're looking at the IWM up 52 cents at 104.21. Look at this beautiful V-shaped pattern. Chapman wave left side high of 144.35 with what you call a Chapman wave two bar reversal at 144.15 the next day. Back on the, this is the 25th of July. Comes down to 132, the 12 point. That's a pretty, that's an 8%. That's a pretty deep uh, correction. Comes all the way back. MACD does the job. Stochastic steady like a rock at 93%. Goes to a leg D, getting close to some kind of a pullback. All time high. Goes to a leg E in the monthly. This is, I don't know what to call this now here because it made a lower low there. Is this a brand new A? <laughs> no way. 
Is this an F or an A in the weekly? I don't have to make a decision because I'm going to wait for Monday or Tuesday to see whether the MACD is going to cross positive. So that says be a little careful because you've got some Ds there. Wait a minute. XLV, I was just, it was mentioned in the Dems, the bull said XLV has gone to an ABC. There it is. So let me put it in. So this is a leg F in the weekly or A. <laughs> This is gonna. I, I want to do a little more work on the XLV over the weekend. But in the meantime, I'm just gonna say the daily has gone to an A, B. That's in a C. This is a pretty deep correction for a C. I don't know if it can get to that D. Um, yeah, I'm gonna have to just call it that. This is a peak C at an all-time high, and it's a D in the monthly. I'll have to do something a little more. It looks this. Everything about this looks like A, B, C. It looks to me like that's a D. I don't know why that's a C. That's a C for a reason. Uh, it is a C. I can't make up anything. This is an A, B, C. It is a C in the weekly. Uh, that has to be a D, and that is an E. I, I have to call it an F. I have no choice. I call it an F, and if it recycles higher, that's great. So the weekly says, <clears throat> oops, be a little careful. This is the S&P Healthcare Spider Fund. If you look at the XLF, still beautiful. Look at this, down just three cents today, having made a peak B. Um, I, I love this action, and the weekly chart is very strong. It looks like it wants to go to a D above 25.59, and the monthly chart is very strong. So I, I had a question. I, I, I did it yesterday. I really don't want to do it again today. All right, well, I'll just do it quickly. We are long Bank of America, and Bank of America is at a peak B. It hasn't gone above the left side high of 25.35. That's our target, the first real target, and that will start leg D if we can go a penny above. And it's the same as the XLF. These financials are doing really nicely. I think that fund managers are drifting towards it, and that's giving some support to the market. Remember that the S, the Dow has five financials in it, even though they're not all bank stocks. Uh, next question I had was, um, <laughs> yeah, look at GE. GE is having a beautiful day. It's up 16 cents at 24.90. This turns out to be a leg C in the daily, and the weekly is starting to turn up. Hey. If GM is any bellwether, which I use all the time as a bellwether, I'm saying this is this doesn't mean to say the market has to go spiraling high. It just says, look at this as another indication of some internal support. Yes, there are a lot of things that are looking terrible. If you want to look at Apple, which I'll do now, I had a question about. Oops, I don't want to type it in the chart. I want to go there. So let's just delete that. Apple, AAPL. Apple is trading at... 151.53, but it gave a peak D top at 164.94 in the daily on the 1st of uh, September. And this is an F slash C, and I said, you know, I'm not going to say anything other than to, to say that these cup formations very often immediately go to a sine wave, meaning that you get the opposite. You'll certainly get a chance at um, an arch formation to follow. And there may be another sine wave. But in the meantime, Apple's looking very weak in the daily and the weekly, and the monthly is just starting to be impacted, but I've still got it in a leg C in the monthly. So this is what I'm trying to emphasize over and over. It is a mixed market, a bifurcated market. What was good is not so good anymore. What was not so good is good now, and that's the way it is. Amazon just cannot get out of its own way. I'm looking at Amazon as a sell mode in daily and weekly, not yet monthly. Um, so let me, IYT was the, uh, is the um, transportation, iShares. This is outstanding action. Look at that. Going from what, the 162 area to 174, 12 points. That's about seven and a half, what, eight and a quarter percent. That's very nice. And it's got a left side, right side cup formation. It says it would like to try for 175, 75, just a little bit higher. And that would improve the weekly chart because it would be crossing positive. It's already just crossed positive. I'd like a little more proof. But the we the monthly chart is excellent. And if you get the transports, it's saying that things are not so bad because in in the distribution, the shipping distribution, the, the rails, whatever it is, they are acting well. Yeah. So the XAL is having a tough time while well, today's up. But it's still um, had its big move down, and now perhaps it could have a little bit more of a rally. You see the rotation, and I, I keep emphasizing that I have to keep saying to myself, remember, what is your mantra? Your mantra is, in a bare face, whether it's a daily, a weekly, a monthly, it doesn't matter, there's bad news. The market takes something as bad news. The VIX index rallies and holds the gains, and you get 
close to strong double digit to triple digit down in the Dow futures and strong double digit 12 minus 12 minus 15 in the S&P futures. And it gets repeated at every opportunity almost every other day of the week. And it just keeps going down. And if it's a one minute chart like yesterday, it just kept going down and down, down, down. So I, I look at this and I say to myself, be very selective. We're trying to be selective. Yeah, OK, I, I was asked about GM. GM, brand new high, GSC, technicals look outstanding. I think now it's getting a little bit overbought technically, but it's still the stochastics at 90% still holding well. The weekly chart made that left side, right side price time match in a shorter period of time. It's in leg D in the, in the weekly, leg D in the monthly. Why would GM be moving like this? So maybe it's part of the, the floods and, and, and re replacement of course. It doesn't matter. It's acting very well. Um, so and some of the other stocks that we have, have uh, 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 they're telling me that in selective areas, things are better. So I had a question about the many ETFs that PC had followed. Away. Yep, OK. So I, I, Mr. Bill, I hope that helped you with that XLV. We, we're, we're in constant, you and I, we, we're looking at the same thing. Then there was a question about, um, so I haven't finished. I wanted to go to gold. So I had a question about the GLD. <clears throat> gold is struggling. It's up, woohoo, four points. At 1298, this is called 1299. But this is nothing because the MACD is very weak and the stochastic is still very weak. And the nine period exponential moving average is, is, is at 1312 is strong resistance. So I don't expect anything but bounces right now in the goal. Today was the first attempt. I thought there might be another attempt on Monday. Let's just say we close instead of closing down 23 points on the Dow unchanged just about on the S&P. Let's just say the worst case scenario is selling comes in, everybody gets nervous about whatever over the weekend. So we closed down 65 points in the Dow and we closed down five points in the S&P. Then I have to say, you know what, maybe we won't make it now. Maybe we have to chop, chop it towards the downside, find a bottom and then have a, a spike to the upside and maybe we won't make a new high. I'm just being as practical as I can with positions that we have. And as, as far as I can see right now, it's very selective to the downside. If you're in the, in the right thing going down, you look beautiful. So now I'm going to look at the GLD because that was the question. And the GLD made a peak E in the last high. I got a little bit of work to do on the GLD, which is changing 123.10 up 42 cents. Uh, uh, Cam in the den wants to know about it. So I will give you my analysis as soon as I return because looking out, I think gold is going to have a move. But the structure, I think, is still quite vulnerable to gold outside the chart. If you're an active trader looking for that extra edge when it comes to trading and investments, then now is a great time to get a two-week free trial to Tom O'Brien's daily market letter, Market Insights. Tom O'Brien's daily newsletter, Market Insights, comes out every market day at around 9.30 a.m. and provides Tom's daily commentary on the broad market, including the Dow, NASDAQ, and S&P, plus specific trade recommendations. There's even an update published most afternoons to keep you informed about the day's market activity. He'll give you the entry price, price target, and stop price of each stock in option trade. With Market Insights, there's nothing left to guessing. For all the details and to get your two-week free trial to Market Insights started today, visit TFNN.com. Larry Pesavento has just started his brand new service, Fibonacci 24-7, and he's already delivering content to his subscribers on a daily basis when the market's opened and even on weekends. Each Monday, you'll receive Larry's written report that provides detailed commentary and a summary on the charts and videos that Larry sends out. And throughout the week, when warranted, Larry will send out via charts or videos or both the key markets that he is watching during the day. This will be up-to-the-date, active trading information that 
will help you in your daily trading. In Larry's first week alone, he sent out 25 charts, six videos, and a full report to his subscribers in just one week. If you're a technical trader that uses patterns and retracements to trade, then Larry's service Fibonacci 24-7 is something that you must try. Right now, new subscribers can get a full 30-day money-back guarantee. With nothing to risk, sign up now to Larry Pesavento's Fibonacci 24-7 by visiting the front page of TFNN.com under Trading Newsletters. Until recently, it was almost impossible for the average investor to hedge against currency risk in Europe or Japan. For a bold trade on Europe or Japan that protects against moves in currency, trade HEGE -E or HEGJ, two times currency hedged leveraged ETFs from Direction Investments. Visit directioninvestments.com today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the Direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact Direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV for the latest market information. So if the market perceives over the weekend going into Monday that things are really not so great, that there could be some conflagration between North Korea and whatever it is, whatever it is. Then you should see gold move much higher. But at this particular point, I've got an arch formation, a peak E at 128.32. And on the 7th of September, the very next day, it goes to 128.30 high. And that's the Chapel Wave 2 bar reversal, a negative, and it gaps down the following the day after that. Very negative action under the nine period moving average of 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. Nine out of 10 sessions. And I think there's going to be a little bit of a bounce. And unless there's some kind of gold spike of $40 over a period of two days, I think that it's just going to bounce down uh, using this Chapman Wave inside track. It's called the inside wedge support target level. And then I think that the left side low will be first 121.29 and then maybe a final capitulation at 120.58. That's kind of the, what I'm looking at here because I think it's, if you look at the weekly, I think we're looking more at time than price at this particular point for gold's consolid consolidation. Then that would imply that the TLT, um, which has the same pattern, should go down a little bit more. But my thinking here is that when gold, oh, when gold, when, when the market finally takes a breather and it should be a pretty, uh, I'd say it's a Five to eight percent breather. If it does that, over coming in the maybe in next week sometime, it starts the down move. Then what we're looking at is that I think that bonds will rally and yields will come down. But first, we might have to see how does it 126.26. How does it test 125? Let's go to Ben in Tallahassee. Ben, how are you? Hey, Basil, how are you? I'm very well, thank you. Good. So, uh, two part question. Um, Boy, though, that XLF still looks really good. And, it, you know, um, it's holding very well. It's kind of leading the it, pack at this point, yes. Well, and, and I'm wondering, as it's making, or I guess it already made a, a, a peak B on a daily, do you see well, that? that the day hasn't, it, well, 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 the day hasn't closed. So far, oh. it looks like a peak B. You've got to oh, wait right, for the right, bar right, to right. finish. Well, right. I, yeah, I guess the question is, what, do you see that the X, XLF would really have to finish, you know, through at least a D, up to like a peak D before you'd see any kind of downturn? So and let's, the second let's question, say, the second question wait, is, yes. do, you, do you see any kind of pullback based on daily only, or do you see weekly could, would contribute to the? So are, are we talking about? Contribute? Are we talking about the? Um, are we talking about the XLF or the, the market, market itself? The market in general. Um, okay, very you... good. Two good questions. Yeah. They're actually related okay. in many ways. So let me just say to you that as it stands right now, I've got a Chapman wave squash between the MACD and the stochastic. 
And that implies it's a very quick move to an A, and then a B, sharp moves to the upside, and then a C, and then there's a stalling formation. And the, the torque, it's in other words, you've put it into first gear and you've really hit the accelerator. And then you slap into second. And as you're putting into third, that gets you to C or whatever the, the next gear is. And then it starts, the, 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 the revs start to slow down and the momentum has to be picked up by the MACD. If I'm correct about this particular pattern in the daily chart, I've got a squash and that invariably takes you quickly to a C and sharply to a C. And then there could be a more languid sideways move and then it goes to a D and then you've got to reassess what's going on. If that's the case, we should get to a C sometime by Tuesday or so. That would be above 2552 in the XLF, the S&P Select Financial Spider Fund. I'll say I'm, I'm completely wrong. If there is a close, it must be a close below 2499. If there is a close below that, I have to say to myself, oops, maybe it's going to stall this time. But so far, it's looking good. And the weekly has this soft W formation in the MACD with a rising stochastic, which gives you a lot of support in the weekly chart in the 2470. So let me be clear. Let's make it a close under 2470 at any point. I'll have to actually reassess the whole daily chart. But so far, it's acting really well. And the 120-minute chart, let me have a look what we've got here, is, uh, if I can do this, is that, a, yep, there it is. So we've got an A, B, C, D, pulls back, A, B, C1, C2. Still looking very good. Yep, I like what I see. I think the XLF, is, and that's the reason why I didn't feel like I could, I could go all out bearish. It had to be selective if I wanted to be bearish at this particular point. Um, I, 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 I could change my mind, but I don't have a reason yet to change it. We'll see what happens at the end of the day and in the analysis over the weekend. But so the first part of your question is, on a daily basis, the XLF, and I'm I still, even at this moment, the Dow and even the S&P are still looking pretty darn good. And the IWM just went to a new high. So it's the daily and the weeklies in all three cases are still pretty strong. So that's as it stands right now. Things can change in the marketplace, but I, I'm looking at it. And believe me, I... I I'm ready to pull that short, you know, short term, short, uh, the, the, the signal. I just, I, I want to be, I want to be a little bit uh, right. slow in doing it no, right I, now. I, yeah, I, I no, I get it. These bifurcated markets are, are, are really tough to predict on the overall market. Um, <clears throat> so then if and when there is a pullback, do you see it? I guess that's where my second question was. Do you see it more on a, on a daily time frame where it's not really that big of a pullback, or would you see it the more daily, the where the daily weekly, is, weekly could contribute? Well, the daily has to lead. The daily has to lead the weekly. Obviously, that's the right. Where the daily goes, you're going to find the weekly will follow. But look at the IBB. It's had a high level consolidation of one, two, three. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirty, forty, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen. Call it seventeen days, consecutive days, and it's made slightly lower lows and lower highs, slightly lower lows and lower highs. And the MACD was really strong. And look how long it took for the MACD to turn decisive, decisively negative. And yet the price is still holding extremely well as it stands right now. But the stochastic has gone down to 56%. And let's say, whoops, there's some internal weakness there. Yet the price, which is the arbiter of the trend, is still only down to a 329. The 329 level, I, I've said for subscribers, between 329 and 336 has been bouncing around for weeks. But the monthly, the weekly chart is really what I'm looking at. There, the MACD is good, and stochastic's at 89%. And it's holding well, but these are two not look good looking candles, not ugly, but they're not very good looking. So you can see that even in sectors that technically should be very weak based on time, have held very well. And that to me says that you've that. So let me just say we are due for a decent percentage pullback. Does the market know that? No, the market has no clue. Do we know that? Yeah, sure, we know that because it hasn't had uh, a 12% correction for a very long time. 
So what I'm looking at here is if the rotational aspect continues, that could be the most frustrating thing for bears that the market has ever done. And this is the second or the third longest duration of a bull market we've ever had. And I don't think it's going to give up all that easy without being the millennials. Yeah, I agree. So, all right, thanks a lot, Basil. Thank you so much for thank calling. Thank you very much. Better tell us. We'll be right back. Dow's down 29. S&P's down only 1.25. Hi, I'm Steve Rhodes, host of The Trader's Edge, heard daily at TFNN.com and author of Mastering Probability, a daily investment and trading newsletter service that I send out each morning by 8 a.m. My morning newsletter service covers exactly what the markets have been doing since last night's close, providing you with an edge on your trading day ahead. You get actionable trading ideas, including the exact entry, stop, and profit targets. Plus, I'll teach you the patterns and hidden market correlations that will make you a better trader. As a subscriber, you'll gain access to my 90-minute money management workshop, where I'll teach you the secrets that'll save your assets. The bottom line, I've got your back, including a 30-day money-back guarantee. See for yourself the type of analysis I provide each trading day by signing up for Mastering Probability today. With nothing to lose, this is an offer you should not pass on. Mastering Probability can be found under trading newsletters on the front page of TFNN.com. In quiet markets, investors search for new trading opportunities. We'd like to introduce you to a new product that provides opportunities even in flat markets. Nadex, the North American Derivatives Exchange, is a new and innovative Chicago-based exchange registered with the Commodity Futures Trading Commission. And unlike most other exchanges, Nadex allows you to trade directly through them with direct market access when using their trading platform. Nadex never charges a fee to use their platform, which even includes real-time charts and full customization capability. Nadex's unique short-term binary options allow traders and investors to capitalize on strategies even when the underlying markets are quiet. Nadex's innovation has allowed them to come up with a line of unique trading products that are unavailable anywhere else. See how it works at Nadex.com. That's N-A-D-E-X.com or click on the Nadex banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Futures and options trading involves risk and may not be appropriate for all investors. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. Hi, folks. This is Steve Rhodes. Stay tuned for another great hour of the Trader's Edge, heard here at TFNN.com. Hello, don't forget, Steve comes up straight off me. Great program. Then you got Dave White, Tom O'Brien. So this is the panel I'm looking at in the 10 minutes. You remember these long arms that go up, these narrow channels, and then it pulls back quite sharply. And now, of course, happened. you've got a cup formation trying to form a cup formation. And this is the most difficult thing. If, if I was trading right now, I'd be looking at this and I'd say, you know what? Too late to go long because all that happened, this green line, the 200-period exponential moving average has been very strong resistance. It could go to a D and then pull back. But I would also at the same time say, you know what? Just to be safe, have a contrary opinion as well. And that says that within this, you've also got the potential for an arch formation. So right now, do nothing in the in the uh, 10 minute uh, because it could go either way. And the ways that we're looking at a close on the 2497.25, if it closes under 2494.50, that's a negative action. It might close at the low of the day. And if it has any rebound at all, it can get to 2498.75. That's going to be a very nice positive, and then you'll probably close narrow 
And uh, but I'm, my my thinking here is that there's a, there seems to be a lot of nervousness down in the market, but I don't see major selling. I just see a little nervousness, a little bounce of. Whoop, sell it here and sell there. If you're looking at the VIX index at 9.96, this is, if I said you the VIX is at 9.96 up 0.30, what would you say? You'd say, okay, the Dow must be down about, hmm, S&P must be down maybe three points, probably five points if it's up 0.30. No, the s and is down $1.75. So, so far, you can see that the, the VIX is not having a big influence. The, the, the histogram is starting to improve. And that says, oh, be, keep in mind that next week, I was expecting that next week there would be a trade in the VIX, meaning that we will get to that maybe close to the D. Uh, it, you know what? I've got to make this real clear. You can get to a D and then recycle and go to an E and an F. The reason why I want the D, let me go back to the Dow, is that in the tradition of go, certainly going to all-time highs, invariably you will get a D at least, not a C. So <laughs> that's what I'm thinking, trying to stay positive in this regard. And all I want is to squeak above 22,419.51, and then I can start making decisions. Is there a few buying coming in, or do you want to go short? What do we want to do? Hey, have a wonderful weekend. Check out my opening call. Have some nice positions. We'll be getting new ones next Tom week. Tom O'Brien has weekend. just announced that he'll be coming to Boston September 30th for a free workshop, The Art of Timing the Trade. Join Tom O'Brien Saturday morning, September 30th at the Boston Marriott in Burlington, Massachusetts, as he breaks down his trading methodology and provides you with the tools to become a more successful and profitable trader. Everyone that attends in person will receive a free signed copy of Tom's best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System. Daryl Martin from Apex Investing Institute will also be presenting for 90 minutes at this free event. Hi, folks. This is Tom O'Brien. Join me in Boston on September 30th as I return to my hometown for a workshop about the art of timing the trade. I look forward to seeing all the tigers and tigresses for this special free event. All action starts early at 7.30 a.m. with a continental breakfast and wraps up at about 1 p.m. Topics that Tom will be covering during his presentation include quality volume, cause and effect, ABC structures, swing points, and much, much more. For all the information on this free Boston event taking place Saturday, September 30th, visit the front page of TFNN.com.